Good evening, all. Sequel to Mad 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 Monster Party. This is done. Now, this is the sequel to Mad Mad Monster Party. In this story, Baron von von Frankenstein achieved his ultimate ambition, secret destruction, had perfectly tested his formula. He sent out messages to best to summon all monsters to the island of evil, Caribbean Sea. Very intended to inform them he had discovered, also revealed, in retirement, the head of the Wild World Organization of Monsters. He needs a leader for them. Besides Frankenstein's monster referring as Fangs, and the monster's more intelligent mate, voiced by Phyllis Dillis, of course, ha ha, who is the monstrous young Goliath who lived in the island with boys and invited, included Count Dracula without a son, the mummy, Hunter by Notre Dame, the werewolf, the invisible man without his family, Dr. Jackham and Mr. Hyde. Yes, he's in this part. Yes. He did appear in the first movie, after all. And, of course, the creature from Black Lagoon refers to as the Cleacher. Baron's beautiful assistant, Francesca, entered the lab and confirmed that all the inventions had been delivered required about one of the address named Felix Blanken, impersonated by James Stewart. Frankenstein explained that Frank Franklin is his nephew, successor to the monster business, Depend on Francesca who covered the wolf for herself. Francesca even asked, Why were not I invited? It. Boris replied that it was not invited since it can be crushed. Boris explained that it crushed the island while Boar and his boar in hand last time. It was not invited though, due to the fact that she wanted them there to ruin. She wanted to have all the money and all the power, but nope, it was given this blank until so she had a little plan in her head. Hmm. Frankenstein has zombie. Buckler's Yachts, chef personality of Peter Lawrence, and of course, his famous chef, Chef of Mafia Muffetello. He creates several foods like wood hog souffle, Aini Crasher Roll, Octopus Soup, and many other disgusting meals these monsters eat. But then, then this time, we are introduced to his nephew, Franken, who works at the magazine store, I mean at a regular store who makes messes, and he is quite really a clumsy clod of an idiot. But then as soon as he got the letter he wanted a day off with, he could never even get to work. He was so lazy. The thing is, he was a normal guy. I mean, he was nervous. Very, very. He was like, that's a flander. She did everything right. Well, he did everything wrong. She should have gotten a letter from his uncle who was invited to the center. He thought it was going to be a fancy party. But in the end, he got it all wrong. As soon as they got to the ship scene, though, they were all heading on to the boat. But then, well, the ship captain said, well, we're having a weird bunch here. When they got spooked by all the monsters coming down on the boat, they even thought that Blanken was going to be a uh, trouble. But nope, he's just a normal guy. Well, normal in some cases. And so, he enjoys himself on the ship. However, being fooled and playing hide and seek because... He thought that all of them were normal, but they're not. They're all monsters. With his glasses off, he's like totally like dumb. I like work my glasses. I can't see anything, and all that. So early and early, the captain of the ship wanted them all to have them for dinner. Although he's afraid they were gonna have him for lunch or dinner or whatever. But that night, all the monsters left to go to the island. As for Franken, never know what's happening. They had a wonderful dinner. And it's a musical. We have several songs in this movie, and the songs were just compassionable, beautiful, and let's just say good. Songs as The Baron, Mad Monster Party, Waltz with Witches, Cocktails, The Bash, You're Different, sung by The Monstrous Mate, Jungle Madness, Our Time to Shine, Mad Monster Party, The Mummy, and Step Ahead. The Baron's Battle and Never Was Love Like Mine, sung by Francesca, a love song for dear Franklin. Yeah, she started to develop a romance for him. And so, in this story, Hori, Francesca tried to get tried to get the vampire to help him get rid of this Franklin. And when it came 
when it came and went and after the party that night then Franklin came and he was he was he felt that why did the captain didn't take him to the island so he had to go there by himself as he reached the island he met his uncle for the first time and he's never really met his uncle really his mother was a witch who married a uh, well a doctor of some proportion I would believe as they brought him to the island, he explained how Franklin would be the heir to his monster world, but he didn't want any part of it. Franklin didn't want anything part of it. Felix didn't want any part of it. He didn't want the secret ambitions. Although he was a kind-hearted person, uh, with a lot of sneezing and coughing and all that, as the monsters tried their best to get rid of him. And but unfortunately. Dracula, Frankenstein monster, and the monsters descended upon Francesca and sent her, and well, they were going to get rid of her, but before they could, she sent a letter to it to cause some trouble. Unknown Mr. Tayson. When the monsters cornered our, cornered Felix, oh, was right and arid, but then, there was a love scene between these two. This is my favorite part of the love scene, when Francesca said, I hated you, I hated you, until he smacked her in the face. But then he felt like she developed a crush for him. And then the love scene. And the love song was just gorgeous. Sung by, of course, a classic singer from the 90s. I mean, from the 80s. This was the 80s. And sang by, let's see. Oh, yes. Francesca. Oh, yeah. Gail Gertrude. I'm going to check around who she is later on. I can't tell you how much I love this. The first time I saw this was on, of course, the animal. The, um. Family Channel, NBC Family Halloween, although it's pretty old day day standards, no one has ever seen it anymore, although most people have. Then, as Felix defended and saved Francesca from many things from the monsters, unfortunately, at this point, it came, or known as a King Kong copycat. It displays to try to steal the secret instruction for themselves and attempt to kill Felix as well as have him put it with. Boris sacrifices life by dropping the veil command upon him, destroying the island of evil and everything on it. The thing is, <sighs> Un Bun, bon, Bor, Baron Bon von Frankenstein was a good man at heart. He didn't want his nephew and Francesca to get hurt. So he sacrificed his potion so none of the monsters could get. In the end, they all kaboom and died. What they get for trying to murder his nephew. Which is pretty sad. Witnessed offshore by Felix and Francesca. Tearfully and Francesca admitted that Felix that she's not human. But the fact is a creature of Boris von Frankenstein. Big and none of us are perfect. But then Sonny, didn't he mechanically repeat the word perfect, perfect, perfect he has also been a robot created of his uncle all this time. Which is really unfortunately very funny yet Delsa, I would say. Now this movie was a classic of my youth. I did watch it, but the first time I watched it was probably about, mm, I say, 13 years old. That was when I first found it. Then the second one was really good. But I tell you, this had a lot of potential for a good movie. The Rankin Best had a very good potential for these type of movies. They were just wonderful. Even though it looked scary, it wasn't. The movie was a marvel. A in a magic stop motion animation process supervised by Teodoro Mochaga, mom produced in Tokyo, Japan. The produce fallen, photographic figure frame by frame at times. And yes, I love this movie. This movie's just awesome. It's one of my favorite movies, besides for the Rink and Bass films. Although, most people thought that the sequel called Mad Men and Monster Party was a continuation, but mostly it wasn't a continuing, it was more of like a sequel. Also, the animation especially is proven by Ojimo Tizaku, and you know who he is, the master of Astro Boy, Kimba, and so many other classics he created. So yeah, he actually helped with this personal project, actually. Who would have thought it? Also at, at, at Hanna-Barbera Studios. And this was basically a good thing, but at the highest thing, this film holds about 7 approved ratings on Rotten Tomatoes, based on 10 reviews. Uh, I'm doing a lot of research on this video. Okay, this video is a classic. It's part of my childhood. And then that's all I have to say, folks. Could I have to go make dinner? Maybe some goulash with some worms and slime in it. 
So enjoy your night, guys. And remember, the pumpkin's watching you, and the spiders are ready to rip in your coils. <laughs> Okay, my brony watchers, remember to subscribe to my channel, and remember, there's always more with me than meets the eye. Or, should I say, more than meets a white rose. Night, folks. <laughs>